Welcome to God Within Us. We have been looking at the ministry of, frankly, one of the most overlooked persons of the Trinity, and that is the Holy Spirit. We know about the Holy Spirit, we sing about the Holy Spirit, but frankly, most of us don't know what the Holy Spirit does. So we are trying to shed some lights by looking at different things that will encourage us to have a richer and more meaningful connection to God because of the work of the Holy Spirit. Now today I want to give you a little bit of insight about something that many of us all wish we had more of, but frankly, none of us do. And that is, we want more self-control. I mean, think about it. We, we've already talked about this previously in other devotions regarding the Holy Spirit, but we all say, you know, we do things we shouldn't do. We don't do the things we want to do, we ought to do. And because of that, we are a mess. I mean, we are a hot mess. Well, the answer to this is not self-control. It's not about finding your own way. It's not even about finding the right methods to make yourself more of a disciplined person. Frankly, the answer to self-control is something that I want to call spirit control. Spirit control. This is God's will for our lives, that we would be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Now, when I say control, a lot of people are like, well, I'm not a robot. I have my own desires. I have my own things going on. And that's true. And God doesn't want us to be robots either. I believe God wants all of us to be obeying him, walking with him, freely worshiping him. But God does give us the wonderful presence of the Holy Spirit to enable us to have spirit control in areas of our lives. There's a couple verses that point to this idea and will encourage you as you think about the things maybe in your life that aren't quite where they ought to be. And the first verse comes in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. This is a popularly quoted verse of scripture when it comes to not being drunk and not drinking. You know, I, I know many parents that have this hanging over their teenage children's walls uh, or their, you know, young adult children's walls, and they hope that it will catch. But often the deeper part of this verse is missed on the focus on alcohol. So he says, do not get, the apostle Paul says, don't get drunk with wine. Okay. So, you know, being drunk is a sin. He says, that's debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, what the heck does that mean? Okay, well, you know, you've heard it said, and I've said it in church, and you've said, like, that person's Spirit-filled. They're Spirit-filled. That was a Spirit-filled message, or that song that Pastor Jason and the worship team, that's a Spirit-filled song. Yeah, sure, but what does that mean? Like, what does Spirit-filled mean? Well, if you look at it, this is a comparative analogy. Drinking with wine. What happens when we get drunk? What happens when we get intoxicated with any substance? Whether we want to say so or not, what we do is we give control of ourselves over to that substance, right? That's why you shouldn't operate a vehicle or even have a serious conversation when you're intoxicated. Why? Because you don't have control. Oh, I, don't, I can't believe I did that. I was just out of control. Or you get pulled over and you were, you were going up crazy speed or you were swerving. Well, the reason why is because you don't have control. What have you done? You have given control of your body and your faculties and your mentality over to a substance. People do it all the time. Some of you, that's your Friday. I hate to make a joke about it, but we are like, well, I want to control everything, but then I want to abuse substances that are going to make me lose all control. It's one or the other. And really, we do want to be self-controlled, but the key is not being self-controlled. The key is not giving our control over to substances. The key is what he says here is being filled with the Spirit, meaning that we're controlled by the Spirit, meaning that the only thing in our lives that is governing what we do is the nudging, the prodding, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit of God that dwells within us. And what is the benefits of having the Spirit control us? One of the benefits is something that the Apostle Paul writes about in Galatians, and he refers to it as the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit has several different attributes, and one of them, surprise, surprise, is self-control. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23, he lists all the different aspects of the fruit, one fruit of the Holy Spirit, and one of those aspects is self-control, which really isn't self-control, it's spirit control. So right now, 
One of the reasons why your life is out of control, one of the reasons why you do things that you don't want to do, one of the reasons why that you may find yourself dealing with feelings and emotions that you know that you're embarrassed to have. Frankly, it's probably because you have given control over of your life in an area to something that is not the presence of the Holy Spirit. When you do that, you get in trouble. Now you say, well, how do you, I, I thought the Holy Spirit dwells within us. I thought that, you know, he is a part of us. He controls us. He doesn't control us. He indwells us. And it's not about the fact that he is the one that makes us do things. But what we have to do is we have to yield our desires, that we have to desire what the Holy Spirit wants for us. We have to desire what God wants for us and take those steps in obedience and let the Holy Spirit guide us every step of the way. You see, it's not about wanting more of the Holy Spirit, no. It's about how much of yourself are you willing to give over to control by the Holy Spirit? That's the big question. And only you know the areas of your life that this is most impacting. But if you feel like you're off-center somewhere, there's a good chance that you have yielded control of your life to something that is not God. So I want to encourage you. The Holy Spirit has the power to lead you. The Holy Spirit has the power to give you new desires. The Holy Spirit has the desire to make you do the will of the Father. That's already there. You already have it. You don't ever have to ask for more of the Holy Spirit again. But what you can ask today is, Father, I want you to have more of me. I want my life to be driven by you instead of me being driven by everything else. And watch what happens when the Holy Spirit fills in on those places.